रिफ्लेक्टर एंटनास पेरोबोलिक रिफ्लेक्टर्स पार्ट वन सीरीज ऑन एंटनास एंड वेव प्रोपोगेशन लेक्चर नंबर 5.12 पॉइंट वन टू पेरोबोलिक रिफ्लेक्टर्स और पेरोबोलिक एंटनास और माइक्रोवेव एंटनास दे आर यूज इन द डिजाइन ऑफ माइक्रोवेव कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम्स दे आर high gain antennas they are narrow beam antennas their origin lies in the exploration of space later they are imported into the design of wireless communication systems radars satellite communications landline micro repeaters these are some of the wireless systems that use parabolic reflector antennas in the present session part 1 of uh, parabolic reflectors the focus is on uh, basic features of uh, parabolic reflector antennas and their uh, field methods or techniques let us start with uh, a few basics regarding parabolic reflectors the paraboloid reflectors or dish antennas are most widely used large aperture ground based microwave antennas dish antennas are widely used microwave antennas large aperture is their characteristic this gives rise to huge amount of gain when fed efficiently from the focal point the dish antenna can produce a high gain pencil beam with low side lobes and good cross polarization discrimination characteristics before going further it is required to be mentioned here that uh, the shape of the reflectors paraboloid reflectors or parabolic reflectors is derived from parabola geometrical curve this curve is associated with the focal point when fed properly efficiently the antenna is able to give high gain large amount of gain in thousands with a pencil beam narrow beam very narrow with a very low side lobes this is also a wanted feature and good cross polarization discrimination characteristics so these are all wanted properties from an antenna these are specifically used for low noise applications such as radio astronomy as already mentioned their origin actually lies in the exploration of space astronomy later they are imported into microwave communication systems they provide patterns of large gains and narrow beams this is already mentioned their excessive size prevents the dish antennas being used at low frequencies here one important point is uh, mentioned these are used only at microwaves or at uh, high frequencies if we try to use them in uh, systems that use lower frequencies then their size becomes prohibitively large size increases with uh, decrease in frequency manageable sizes exists only at microwave frequencies for this antennas hence we don't find dish antennas being used at uh, low frequencies are in low frequency wireless systems the shapes of parabolic antennas are shown in a it is round in shape it is like a dish a dish which can find 
commonly in the kitchen. The imaginary surface that is bounded by the edge of the dish, that imaginary surface is called aperture. Aperture can be defined as the surface, imaginary surface through which signal enters into the antenna or the leaves from the antenna. Now here is shown a source also, point source. So basically there are two parts in this structure. One is a reflector. The shape of this reflector is derived from the curve parabola and a source. Reflector is uh, passive whereas the source is active. The purpose of the reflector is to prevent the signal moving in unwanted directions and also directing the signal which is moving in unwanted directions into wanted directions. Two things it is able to serve. Second one is B. Here is a plate. It is a flat plate bent in the form of a parabola. So this plate is a reflector. At the focus of the parabola, there is a line. It represents a line source. This line source is like a tube light, tube of a tube light. Whereas point source in A is like a bulb, incandescent bulb that is used in a household. A is called a dish antenna, B is called a cylindrical antenna. A few points regarding structures. The parabolic reflectors convert curved wavefronts into plane wavefronts by reflection, thereby increasing the directivity. So it is the reflection that plays important role in the functioning of parabolic reflectors. We are going to see in case of lenses, it is a refraction that plays important role. The radiation pattern of the paraboloid consists of a very sharp lobe, pencil shaped beam surrounded by a number of minor lobes which are very small. In general, parabolic antennas have two parts. One is primary source. It is actual source of radiation. It is called primary antenna. Horn antennas, end fire arrays, dipoles, etc. are used as primary sources. There are primary sources usually placed at the focus of the reflector. The second part is reflecting surface. It is secondary antenna. Its name is secondary antenna, reflector. The shape of the surface is either paraboloid or cylindrical parabola. Paraboloid is the one that is shown in A of the previous slide. Cylindrical parabola is shown in B. The radiation pattern of primary source is called primary pattern, whereas pattern of radiation from the aperture is referred as secondary pattern. Notice very sharp lobe pencil shaped beam, small uh, uh, number of minor lobes whose amplitudes are small. These are all properties of secondary pattern. Primary source gives a pattern. That pattern is modified by the secondary antenna. Ultimately, giving a pattern which exhibits highly desirable properties. Two more points. To convert cylindrical wavefronts generated by line source into plane ones, cylindrical parabola is useful. Cylindrical wavefronts. If we consider a point source, wavefronts are spherical. To convert these spherical wavefronts into planar ones, paraboloid is required, dish antenna is required, line source, line source like half wave dipole, it uh, generates cylindrical wavefronts. This is dipole, 
these are cylindrical wave fronts one after another they arise from the dipole to convert cylindrical wave fronts into planar ones cylindrical parabola is required useful in case of spherical waves emanated from point sources paraboloid is used it is already mentioned a great advantage of dish and nas is that all of its structure with the exception of feed antenna is non resonant and hence it can work over a wider bandwidth notice beam width is very small these are narrow beam antennas whereas their band widths are large these are broad band antennas the frequency of operation can be easily changed by simply replacing the feed with another that works at a new frequency some dishes transmit or receive even multiple frequencies by having several feed antennas mounted at focal point close together now we move to some more points regarding reflector structure paraboloid is a three dimensional geometric surface obtained by revolving the parabola about its axis notice paraboloid is also called dish here it is uh, being told that paraboloid is a structure that can be obtained by revolving parabola this is parabola this is the axis by rotating this curve parabola about its axis the curve traces a surface that surface is paraboloid usually we call it as a dish antenna dish reflector the conducting reflector surfaces in the shape of paraboloid are called paraboloidal reflectors parabolic reflectors microwave dishes notice this reflector it is made with uh, metal with uh, conductor sheets reflector surfaces made of solid sheets are heavy and have more wind pressure and also costly solid sheets can be used but uh, when made with uh, solid sheets reflectors are associated with certain difficulties what are they more wind pressure they become heavy so mounting in the open atmosphere and maintaining them there is difficult they are also costly to overcome these problems surfaces are made with wire screens metal gratings etc when surfaces are made with wire screens metal grating and perforated metal or expanded aluminum metal sheets they have the advantages of lightweight low wind pressure low cost easy to fabricate and assemble in addition to ability of conforming to different shapes so usually they are made with wire screens not with solid sheets but then reflector is made with uh, perforated sheets or wire screens they suffer with the disadvantage of energy leakage resulting in back lobe side lobe and lower efficiency so wire screen reflector and nas are also associated with certain shortcomings like energy leakage back lobe side lobe lower efficiency when the reflector is made of a grill of parallel wires or bars oriented in one direction it acts as a polarizing filter as well as reflector it then reflects only linearly polarized radio waves with the electric field parallel to the grill elements this type is often used in radar antenna combined with a linearly polarized feed horn it helps filter out noise in the receiver and reduces false returns basic structure of a dish antenna is quite simple functioning of a dish antenna is also easy 
to understand but uh, when it comes to practical use there are several difficulties there are several issues that uh, are encountered each one of these uh, issues they are uh, attended they are uh, solved they are uh, overcome step by step with uh, the growth of uh, technology dish antennas are associated with uh, certain parameters and terms those are introduced here focus the focus or focal point is the point at which incoming signals get concentrated when the radiation is from this point the waves after reflection from the parabolic surface forms into a thin pencil beam to ensure better performance it is required to replace the radiation source at the focus to place the radiation source at the focus so functioning is like this when the antenna is uh, working in a transmitting mode if a primary source is located at the focus then what happens primary source radiates this radiation goes and hits the reflector surface there it gets reflected and uh, travels like this similarly the wave falls over the surface here it gets reflected and falls like this most like this similarly wave similarly another wave so one can find a beam moving out uh, towards the receiver when the wave is coming from far away points and the antenna is acting as receiving end now the operation is exactly inverse wave traveling like this like this like this comes falls gets reflected and reaches to focus similarly wave coming far away points travels travels hits the surface reaches the focus focal point another term is vertex this is the innermost point at the center of the reflector somewhere here this is vertex this is focal length f it is the distance from the focus to the vertex of the paraboloid reflector it is d square by 16 c where d is aperture diameter and c is depth of the reflector notice this is dish antenna it has an opening this is aperture this is surface this is aperture diameter of aperture aperture is circular it has certain diameter that diameter is indicated by d c is a depth of the reflector aperture what is aperture d is the opening or area which the reflector covers another term f ratio it is also known as focal ratio it is the ratio of focal length to aperture f to d ratio it is an important here d is dia aperture it is an important parameter describing the structure of the reflector as it decides the depth of the dish itself that is amount of contour or wrap around of the paraboloid with its fixed diameter reflectors with the small f to d ratio are called deep dish reflectors whereas dishes with large f to d ratio they are called shallow reflectors notice this small d is same as capital d that is referred as aperture dia in the previous slide deep reflectors suffer with the drawback of difficulty in providing proper illumination shallow dishes give uniform field distribution over the aperture and it is easier to support and move them mechanically the feed for this type of dishes is larger and farther from the reflector a drawback however it results in a narrow primary beam in general f to d ratio range is 0.3 to 0.5 and dishes with ratios 0.5 to 1 are used only specialized applications like monopulse tracking radars 
monopulse tracking radars. So whether it is a shallow or whether it is deep, uh, each one is associated with uh, certain uh, plus points, certain uh, minus points, depending upon our requirement, requirement of the application. One can go for uh, one of these two. Some more points regarding parabolic reflections. The main source uh, of radiation is usually placed at the focus of the paraboloid reflector, which is already mentioned. It's a radiation pattern. It is called primary pattern. It should have the following characteristics. Primary source of pattern. Actual radiation source pattern is primary pattern. It must exhibit a certain properties for uh, efficient uh, functioning of the antenna, total antenna. The directional nature of the primary radiator should be such that all the feed radiation is intercepted by the reflector without any spillover. It should be able to give the desired aperture amplitude illumination. Primary pattern should have no phase variation with angle. These are properties. So a source with uh, some arbitrary pattern cannot be used in the design of paraboloid antennas. Sometimes to prevent blockage of the radiation from the reflector, the feed of a parabolic reflector antenna is displaced laterally from its focal point. As a consequence, the beam shifts off axis in the opposite direction to the feed displacement, ultimately resulting in gain loss, beam broadening, and appearance of coma side lobe. The amount of the degradation of the performance due to off axis feed is a function of F to D ratio and the amount of feed displacement. The point that is being mentioned here is this. This is a reflector, here is a source. Now, source gives out wave. After getting reflected, the wave travels like this. Usually, the source has certain non-negligible dimensions. Because of these dimensions, what happens is, the source blocks waves that are moving out after getting reflected from the reflector. It blocks. Similarly, you consider a wave getting reflected and being blocked by the source. So what happens is you can find a wave, wave here, but here in a certain portion it is blocked out. Blockage is there. This blockage leads to gain loss beam broadening and appearance of coma. These are all issues, practical issues. Of course, this problem blockage disappears when the primary source is uh, of dimensions which are negligibly small. Now, a few points regarding feed mechanisms. Focal point feed systems Cassie grain reflector system. These two are two important feed mechanisms. Now we try to understand important features of these two mechanisms. In focal point feed system, the source of radiation is always placed at the focal point of the paraboloidal reflector. So primary Antenna's location is always focal point in case of focal point feed systems. Depending upon the method adopted in placing the source at the focus, it can be either front feed, rear feed, or center feed. The offset feed, which is used to avoid blockage, also belongs to this category. In all these methods, the the process involved is not only simple but also most economical and they are widely used in domestic systems and satellite television applications. 
one or two points regarding offset feed. In the previous slide, it was explained the issue of blockage. When the radiation source is located at the focus, what happens is a part of the outgoing plane wave is blocked. It results in gain loss. To avoid this issue, blockage issue, a technique got developed. That technique is offset feed. In offset feed, the main radiation source it is not placed at the focal point. Instead, it is placed slightly away from the focal point. This technique we discuss in this session soon. Another feed mechanism is a cast grain reflector system. Here the radiation is fed through the center of the reflector towards a hyperboloidal surface which reflects the radiation back onto the paraboloidal reflector. In cast grain system what happens is here a hole is made. Source is placed somewhere here. This source sends out the wave. This wave falls over a hyperboloidal surface which is located somewhere here. This hyperboloidal surface then reflects the wave towards paraboloid reflector. Then the hyperboloidal ref uh, parabolic reflector reflects forming into a plane view. Different feed mechanisms are illustrated here. A front feed using a horn. This is focus. This is horn and now wave is fed here. Maybe through a wave guide like this, like this, it comes and it gets emitted by the horn and now the wave then uh, travels like this, like this, gets reflected and in B is shown a center feed using spherical reflect. Here is a spherical reflect. This is parabolic reflector, this is spherical reflector, a coaxial line, this is a dipole, it gets emitted, emitted wave then gets reflected by spher spherical reflector, then it moves its parabolic surface and then travels towards uh, a distant point after forming into a beam. In C is shown a rare feed using horn. So this is the feed point. This is a waveguide kind of thing. So wave travels like this, like this, gets emitted, wave goes and gets hit like this. Notice A and C have a lot of uh, similarity. A is front feed, whereas C is uh, center feed. D is offset feed, as already shown, already told, main radiator is placed slightly away from the focal point. It is not at the focal point. In uh, the earlier three techniques methods, actual radiation source is at the focal point, but in a D, offset feed, it is slightly away. This is one aspect. Another aspect is, in this technique, the total reflector is not used, only a part, part of the reflector is used. So even though blockage issue is solved in offset feed, it uh, comes with uh, some other issues like uh, coma, small gain, asymmetry, etc. Now a small discussion regarding this feed method. The front feed method results in impedance mismatches in the feed obstructs the aperture, requires larger length of feeding line, reducing the sensitivity and degrades the performance of the transmitter by creating standing wave pattern in the transmission line. These are the issues associated with the front feed method. The mismatch can be reduced using apex matching plates but at the cost of gain. Provision of small dipole arrays such as Agi, Uda or Horn antenna at the focus pointing towards the reflector is example for this mode of feed. It is already illustrated in the previous slide. 
now red fit rare or center fit method gives a compact system requires a smaller length of transmission line resulting in low loss but this type of fit results in an asymmetrical pattern which is a disadvantage an example is one in which the stray radiation from the source like dipole is reflected back towards the parabolic reflector using a spherical sub reflector in another configuration the waveguide is uh, inserted at the vertex of the reflector to its front direction and bent in such a way that the horn end now connected at its end but placed at the focus radiates towards the reflector rare field is also illustrated already in a previous slide now we have few points regarding offset feed the offset feed uses only half of the paraboloidal reflector and instead of a conventional pyramidal horn hog horn is employed as primary feed antenna this feed has the advantages of no aperture blocking so blocking issue is no more in offset feed and no impedance mismatch but suffers with scanning difficulties and reduced performance particularly the gain reduced gain difficulty in scanning these are two major issues pertaining to offset feed the presence of primary antenna in the path of the reflected wave results in the following disadvantages one waves reflected from the dish back interact with the primary antenna resulting in the mismatch two primary antenna acts as an obstruction blocking out the central portion of the aperture thus increasing the minor lobes see here he is describing the issue of blockage to overcome these difficulties offset feed so advantage associated with the offset feed is as already mentioned several times blockage is avoided as already mentioned only a part of paraboloid is used with the primary antenna displaced to a position where it is not an obstruction to the beam the offset feeds reduce aperture blocking and bswr these are advantages in addition they lead to the use of larger f to do d ratios while maintaining acceptable structural rigidity disadvantages with the offset feeds are difficulty in mechanical steerability or ground or ground based antennas gain loss these are already mentioned beam broadening and appearance of a coma side lobe other drawbacks are also there like generation of cross polarization when illuminated by a linearly polarized primary feed what is this cross polarization this is antenna it is primary source let us suppose it is giving out a wave which is vertically polarized this vertically polarized wave after getting reflected it moves towards the far away point now if you observe the the wave that is reflected in this wave usually one can find a horizontal polarization too source is giving out vertical polarization but after reflection in the wave in addition to vertical reflection there exists horizontal polarization also so the wave is divided into two vertical polarization and horizontal polarization usually the receiving antenna is polarized it is an antenna which is designed to receive vertically polarized wave so vertical component of the incoming wave only reaches the receiver through the receiving antenna and horizontal component horizontal part it gets discarded so it means uh, loss a part of uh, the wave is uh, lost increasing the losses in addition the horizontal polarized wave may be 
transformed into noise. So noise level gets increased. This is a horizontal polarization is called cross polarization. It is unwanted. We can see from this description of a communication link, functioning of a communication link, we can understand cross polarization is unwanted. Circularly polarized feeds eliminate depolarization, but they lead to squinting of the main beam from both sides. In addition, the structural asymmetry of the system is usually considered a major drawback. These are all the issues pertaining to offset feed. So here it is to mention that uh, if uh, we get uh, advantage in one direction, in another direction, there is a drawback coming automatically. With this, we come to an end to this session. This is the first session on uh, parabolic reflectors. In this session, our focus is on uh, basics of uh, parabolic reflectors, their structural features, and uh, also the feed mechanisms. In the second part uh, on uh, parabolic uh, reflectors, we consider gain beam width in addition to several other interesting aspects of parabolic reflectors. Hope this session is useful to you. We meet again in a part two on parabolic reflectors soon. Thank you.